proceedings. I'm not shad, but I do have a couple of points about his recent nunchuck videos. Points. Yeah, I'm not Lindy Beach either, but I do have a pair of these. And what I'm going to try here, kids, don't try at home, please, for the love of your furniture and yourselves. Now, before I go into the actual meat and potatoes of everything here, I do want to say there has already been some replies already made. There's been some response videos, some better than the others, some obviously quite well put together, some not so quite well put together. I have absolutely no idea if mine's going to be considered good or not. I just don't know. Uh, but I will put them all up in the card here. Chad's obviously done some uh, videos on this himself. I'll put those in the card as well. And of course, they'll be in the uh, description below, uh, just in case I forget. Well, I might forget both. If I do forget both, hit the comment section up, give me a hard time about it, and I'll remember to do it then. Editing me. Remember, once you've uploaded, do it. Do it. Do it! Okay, so first and foremost, I must say I do have to agree with a lot of the points Chad has made about nunchucks being a bit on the useless side and certainly dangerous side to the user. Um, first things first, I'm just going to point out I'm not a historical YouTuber. I'm just somebody who has their own channel and wants to wade in on, uh, on a couple of points because there are a couple of issues that he brought up that I do th feel need to be expanded on a little bit. First of all, um, I'm just going to show you these two. These are nearly identical in their overall construction. Um, if the autofocus will come into play, there we go. You'll see that they're actually not done the same way. They're not made the same way that Shad's homemade ones are. I'll just put one down because the drain is essentially the same. Um, over here, and we go autofocus, that might help you. Over here, we have the actual mounting. Uh, that is actually on ball bearings. If I just turn this around like this, you'll see that is actually what's creating the freedom of motion here is ball bearings, which obviously is not the traditional design, but hey ho, hey ho, it's a modern day innovation. The chain itself is relatively short, uh, and you've got exactly the same premise going over here. This particular set is uh, a wooden a wooden body with foam padding over the top. Now, it has been ugh, well over 10 years since I last did any kind of martial arts training, and we did start making use of these. We started off making use of foam nunchucks, which basically had a hollow plastic tube with rubber over the top of it, uh, which just had a cord to connect the two separate sticks. Should it be called a nunchuck either way, or and nunchucks as a plural to describe the pair, I'm just not sure. Um, yeah, but anyhow, that's beside the point here. We have perhaps a bit more potential for danger with these ones because it is still solid wood underneath. The foam padding only does so much, but it does move quite well. As long as you don't have other things in the way. That's actually a barbell that I've got there, complete with a plate, so that is actually gonna be coming into use in a little while for one of the things that you should not try at home. But let me just step back a bit so I'm out of the way a bit. You can see I do have some rust because I have not touched these things in over a decade. But it is surprising how quickly it does come back to you. Yeah, and some things I'm just trying off the spur of the moment just to see if I can still do it. And I will say this straight away, my ribs are hurting from that because of the impact. It does hurt um, when you have to strike yourself in that regard. It does basically play into uh, one of the points here. If you are going around doing a hard strike like that and it ends up hitting you, you are going to potentially get hurt. Perhaps not so bad in that regard because in that kind of motion that's going over uh, quite evenly the back of my spine. But of course, there's always an opportunity for it to not do that and for it to go somewhere else. Um, just to show some of the things. I'm not really hurting myself, I'm feeling the impact, but that's about it. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you can see that the uh, foam is starting to come off 
a little bit there. Um, so yeah, that is something I agree with straight away. Now one thing Chad's pointed out that this might very well be to him a weapon that he would rather not use or he would rather modify uh, if it was the only thing available to hand by basically taking the chains off. I don't think these particular chains would come off easily. Um, I've got enough strength to do a fair amount of damage if I wanted to but uh, there's no way that I can say that I could pull that off. Maybe if I was Joe Gibbs, maybe he'd be able to, uh, to break them off, who knows. That guy seems to be able to pretty much do anything from what I've seen of his uh, videos on archery. But even then, even if you couldn't break the chain or the cord, if it's cord, yes, you would almost certainly be able to break a weak enough cord. You don't even need to do that though. All you need to do at its most simplest would be to put them into one hand and effectively use as if it's just a regular striking weapon. I mean, there's a variety of things that you can do with this just in one hand. That you can use Eskrima sticks for, for example. You can strike with the chains that way. You can strike with the bl uh, blunt, softer, wooden padded areas here. You can still strike upwards and downwards, for example. Okay, there's all kinds of striking motions that are available to be used. Okay, there's plenty of options and opportunities to do things. <laughs> And if you keep the chains on, you can still do stuff like that. Knock somebody down and around like that. I'll probably do something in the distance a bit more to try to simulate that a bit more. But let's say, say you manage to knock somebody around like that and so on and so forth. You might be able to bring the chains down on the back of the head. Might not do much damage in itself, but then you could crack around the neck which would be dangerous. Which brings me on to another point. Something Shad alluded to was being able to basically use it potentially as a defense against a knife. Now let's say somebody has a knife or a gun or something in their hands and they're pointing at somebody. You could, in theory, wrap the nunchuck around and then get it into a position like that. Probably be better if I go around like that. This is the reason I've got the barbell and obviously I'm going to be uh, demonstrating in a bit more detail here but if I had both hands free I could in theory, uh, using this particular methodology, crack the wrist or the arm of the person because obviously they have pressure there but of course your timing would have to be phenomenally good. Uh, in a real fight I don't see that working nine times out of ten, maybe one time out of ten. And of course if somebody's got something like a gun, uh, that's going to be a lot more difficult to uh, to actually disarm them before they get a shot off. Even with a knife there's still going to be a... I'd imagine there would still be a degree of freedom, but that's one of the reasons I've got the barbell there. We'll be taking a look at that element next. Now, as I said before, it is possible in theory that you could catch someone's wrist hand or arm in this kind of manner here. This is the reason why I brought the barbell into play to give the extra leverage that I don't have because I'm doing this against myself against it rather than a partner and I wouldn't really want to do this against any kind of training partner or anybody else in real life either. But the bar is basically simulating the where my other hand would be if it wasn't for the fact that I'm doing this to myself. So again really do not try this on yourself or on anybody else. Do not try this at home. As you can see I'm applying quite an equal amount of force at the moment, just a gentle amount of force at this point, on my wrist with the chain. It doesn't go all the way around but then you have the obstacle that is obviously the nunchucks themselves in the way. The more pressure I put on here the more pain I can feel for certain and the more da danger I would be in you know, if I pull on this really hard, then yes, I could potentially break my own bones, which of course I don't want to do. Uh, but I am noticing one thing, as far as my hand is concerned, if I then try to make a fist and then try to, to open it, I'll just move this around a bit more, I can't. With the pressure on, I can't actually open my hand properly. It's taken a great deal of effort to get it open that much. If I just look these off, then it opens up again. So if I squeeze down, nothing happens, but if I try to make a fist or something like that, and then try to open it, yeah, bit more difficult to do. Uh, so yes, and in theory, getting this particular move off and getting it working could do a great deal of damage, but in reality, what's likely to happen? I mean, you'll probably eagle eye amongst you if there's not too much light going off here. Yeah, you can see the chain marks around there. You know, what's the likelihood of that particular move being pulled off successfully in a real situation? I would say nine times out of ten it would probably fail. 
um, because there's so many other things going on in a fight, but that one time out of ten you'd have to be phenomenally skilled and have a really good opening that just can't be ignored, can't be counted by the other person. <sighs> but I still don't see it working. So in summary, I think, yeah, I have to agree with Shad, these things are potentially a very dangerous weapon to use themselves. I mean, if you've looked at any of the B-roll footage that I've done there, um, B-roll footage, can I really justify calling it that when I'm probably not doing any kind of narration? But if you look at the B-roll footage that I shot and showed me demonstrating moves, and please bear in mind, I am rusty as hell after more than a decade of not having actually used these things. This, the day of filming is literally the first day that I have ever actually used these since I put them down, and locked them in a box and put them away in my loft years and years and years ago. I mean, you can get the swing of them <laughs> sooner or later. But yeah, I, I can see some practical use to them if you're careful. I do think, well, there's one of the tests that I can do to sort of demonstrate something. I'm reluctant to do it, but it's the pain test. Really don't try this at home. So what do I mean by the pain test? Well, Shad did demonstrate the differences in power generated by using a stick at full force and a nunchuck at full force on the same subject. Now I'm not going to go full force here because I do not want to hurt myself, but I am willing for science, for history, for morbid curiosity, to apply a little bit of force, a little bit of pain, and for that definitely using padded nunchucks is a better option than pure wood ones. I think you can also wear metal ones, although that's probably not necessarily something that would have had way back in the day when these things were first created. So, using this as a solid stick, yes, it, admittedly it's not going to be the same overall length and whatnot, but let's just see. A, gen a gentle tap. Yeah, I can feel that. Let's go for a bit more force. Yep, definitely felt that. That felt ir irritating. A bit more force. Yeah, that's definitely noticeable. All right, now let's try swinging the nunchuck at it. Dear God, please don't try this at home. I do this so you don't have to. Yeah. That was a lot more noticeably painful, although that was also on the wrist more than the forearm. So let's try that again. That was further up, that was bang on the forearm. And that hurt far more than actually hitting myself with just one length, of course, if I was just, let's combine them together. That's still not gonna give the same proper leverage, but all the same. Yeah, it's slightly less painful. I think there is something to be said. Um, I'm not going to do any more tests like that. I am not some kind of pain f uh, freak. I do not enjoy pain in any way of 
in any way, shape or form. It is there to let you know something is wrong. Um, yeah, I'll just, I don't know if the camera will actually pick that up. Uh, I can't see the viewfinder that well because of the ring light. Um, but yeah, I would say that the swing definitely felt like it hurt more than anything else. We've got to remember that there's different kinds of impact. Just because something's knocked you over doesn't mean that it's actually more powerful than something that's done more sort of internal damage. What we'd really need is somebody who has proper full-blown nunchucks, zombie heads, uh, watermelons, things like that, and just do comparisons with nunchucks and sticks um, and just see what really does do the most damage. I've got a sneaky suspicion it might actually be the nunchucks though. Uh, certainly after how my arm is feeling after that. But again, please don't do that at home. Seriously. Stay tuned in next week's video as I will be pulling a £350 English wall for me by Cutler with the assistance of the instant Legolas. Meanwhile, Jason King, the OBE, will be looking on looking rather impressed. I hope. Who's left? What? Do 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 do